All right, having said that, in recent weeks, of course, we saw residents of uh, various states like Kano, Niger, or Yo, and Lagos, you know, uh, taking to the streets to protest the harsh economic uh, realities we found ourselves in. Now, culminating into what took place yesterday, the NLC protest, okay? Uh, we've heard the NLC over time, you know, going back and forth with the federal government talking about um, the minimum wage that has to be reviewed. But yesterday's protest wasn't really about the minimum wage. It was about hunger. It was about the government doing something about the high cost of living and all that. So the protest took place across some states in Nigeria, Abuja, Lagos, that I'm very sure of. I think even in Ogun State, uh, Governor Makinde did come out to also speak to the protesters. And uh, we saw some other states, you know, join in the NLC uh, protest. Uh, but uh, this morning, we woke up to news that the Nigerian Labour Congress has suspended its nationwide pro protest and extended the ultimatum given to the federal government till the 13th of March, which is two weeks from this time. All right, now, um, this is to allow the federal government, you know, to at least wade in and do the necessary. That's what the NLC is saying. All right, so to kickstart this conversation, let's quickly go to this scene uh, to human rights lawyer, senior advocate of Nigeria, Femi Falano, who joined the protest yesterday. This is what he has to say to the government. We'll be right back. Okay, well, let's, let's uh, continue with the show. All right, man. let's talk about yesterday's protest. You know, uh, what the protest was meant to achieve vis-a-vis uh, -vis what it is going to achieve now that the NLC has shared the protest and issued yet another ultimatum. It's been ultimatum upon ultimatum upon ultimatum on the side of the uh, NLC. Now, I want to ask the question, is this a sign of weakness on the side of the labor union or are they just trying you know, to be understanding of the situation and giving the federal government enough room for them, uh, you know, to, to do what they should do. Uh, you know that um, on this table, on several occasions, we have congratulated an NLC so much mm. uh, because of their hide and seek uh, game they are doing uh, with, uh, with federal governments. But one thing that is so certain here is this, and um, I could recall that I said on this program that this NLC needs to go out to their shell and think of ways to undo this government, especially federal governments. These federal governments, <laughs> they are so, how would I put it? I don't want to use the word cunning, but I will try to use that they are intelligent. And if care is not there, in dealing with them, you have to be more intelligent. So, and that is the thing. I think uh, uh, my general led uh, administration of LLC through so much, especially when you have the TUC, the way you have TUC president, from the inception, even during the time of minimum wage, you see the body language, that they can't work together. Mm. Although the reason why TUC even come out of uh, NLC is because of this politician. But one thing here is this, the protest yesterday, whether we like it or not, it was a success. Mm. Success in the sense that, I don't know where and to the general of the federation will put his hands now with what he said how can you say that he's a child in the court against protest a fundamental human rights as a trade in united nation um, uh, 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 article i can't understand a seasoned uh, lawyer like that and thank god for family father no i say that come and you and say come Protest is the fundamental right. Nobody can collect it from anybody. And then, thankfully, the NLC and all the members that went out, there was no issue of anybody being harassed. And there was no rancor. And nobody hijacked. They would say they hijacked. Which NLC uh, protest has been hijacked? I've never seen one since I was born. They were so much organized. And yesterday on should be able to send the message down. But whether the government taking the message and listen carefully, I don't know. So that is another thing. But one thing that is so certain is that giving another ultimatum, they are still giving them room. And don't forget that those people that went out yesterday, 
That is not the total population of Nigeria that are hungry. Some people, their mind wants to protest. But because of the hunger in them, that you know if you have to uh, protest, you have to get a bottle of water, you have to get a sausage and some other things. So, and that's the thing. Assuming NLC said, okay, anybody that comes for the protest, lunch is very, very sure for you. I'm telling you, more people will go. I'm telling you. But one thing that is so certain is this. I think this is a high time, like uh, Mr. Shoki was saying, is This is a kind of protest that ought to have been done because I must confess. For fact, that we have the privilege of having one or two nerds to eat. What are those people that are below us? Those people that they don't have the voice that we have. They don't have that capa capability and capacity at, at that particular time. So one thing there is that Nigerian government, it may look like a melodrama. That is all guy in the land. Even those people that are working, they can't cater for themselves and their family. And at the same time, the civil servants that are keeping quiet, the police officers that are keeping quiet, every worker, either private, public, or whatever, or SMA that are keeping quiet, they are also hungry, like those people that protested yesterday. Those people that protested yesterday are just representatives of all Nigerians. It is important that. This federal government needs to call the state government, call the local government. This is the time that Nigeria needs the soccer. I'm telling you, if somebody is angry, if somebody is hungry, hunger will come in. When hunger comes, a lot of things. Do you know that as we speak now, majority of the food supermarkets <laughs> have been bought goods now. They won't see anything. You've never seen. But there are some people in the cartoon as at when as at Monday. We are the abundant shops. We are the shops the abundant. Those who sell it. Huh. Thank you, Mr. Ligolo. Mr. Shokito, let me have your reactions to yesterday's protest and this new uh, two-week ultimatum given by the NLC to the federal government. I, th I think the question that Nigerians have to ask, we need to ask ourselves this question. Um, what exactly does the NLC want? Who are they fighting for? What are they fighting for? Um, so this new ultimatum, the primary plank of their demand is minimum wage. Everything else is just attachy, join, join, so that it will not look like it's only one thing. But the truth of the matter is that this fight for UIJ is for minimum wage. Um, and even he is confused as to what he should be demanding as minimum wage. You know. You know, because as you can see, hmm. cost of living. They were proposing one million, but that's you know, I mean, that's feasible. ridiculous. Yeah, it's yeah. ridiculous. Um, but again, you you can't you can't increase minimum wage to sixty five thousand on that day circumstance. That's what the, that's what the government promised thirty five thousand in addition to the thirty thousand that was hmm. on the ground before. That won't work hmm. clearly because you, your minimum wage cannot be a fraction of the cost of a bag of rice, hmm. <laughs> and a bag of rice is about eighty thousand now. So. Even the NLC themselves don't really know what they want. And, and I posit, as a member of that circle, that the NLC is not fighting for the hungry masses of Nigerians. They're fighting for themselves. They're fighting for government workers. And we must be clear about it. And that's why when they went on the protest yesterday, the protest was supposed to be a two-day protest. And then Joe Ajero said, point made. No need for a second day. What point has been made? What point exactly has been made? Um, what utterance have we heard from government of the day after day one to suggest that perhaps the, the fundamental changes that need to happen to make life easier for Nigerians will happen? Mm. That we've caught their air and they will act accordingly. There was no such statement, no such utterance. Um, the police, Mr. Degmiro was commending them. Yes, on the face of it, commendable. But that was a Trojan horse. Hmm. That was a Trojan horse. Why? why, why I mean, <laughs> except for one or two isolated incidents in the past, I've never seen the police come out so boldly and obviously to support protesters by even giving them food and water. So you have to ask the question, why? Where did the money come from? Where did the money come from? Who financed it? Who funded it? So now, one of the reasons that NLC is giving for suspending the strike is that even the police gave us cover. How bad? How can we be so gullible? 
that that's that's gullibility to a to to a to a level that is shocking coming from people that are supposed to be activists who are supposed to be resolute who are supposed to have their eyes firmly fixed on the goal and the ball and refuse to be distracted mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm shocked that it was so easy to to just cast them aside with this very small game this small chess move that the federal government pushed towards them civil society some sections of civil society have said they're not backing down so the nlc has given a two-week ultimatum i can say from the evidence of recent history that nothing will happen after the two weeks government is not going to take them serious because the weakness of the leadership of the nlc is obvious to the to even the blind so government is going to continue to play these games a day they are not going to hear from the government side between now and 13 days on the 13th day of this ultimatum they are going to call them for a meeting it's the same playbook and that meeting will be to ensure that whatever was supposed to come on day 14 does not happen and as soon as they prevent that from happening they will continue to ignore them the level of disdain and disrespect that the government has treated organized labor you know under this administration is is disturbing because you can't have labor that is this weak it, it, it's it's recipe for disaster labor is supposed to be the only non-partisan organized resistance to the government of the day if you if you lose that in a democracy you're on your way to anarchy it's just a matter of time so for me you know uh, there's nothing to celebrate i'm not happy with joe ajero i think he has not led labor uh, you know uh, with distinction so far he has left a lot to be desired and one more point that i must make on the person of joe ajero the, the, the you know the he you cannot have a labor leader that supports capitalism, that supports neoliberal policies. Joe Ajero supports subsidy removal. He is not fit for that office. You cannot, as a labor leader, support any policy that will make life hard for the masses, for the, for, for the downtrodden, the vulnerable. You can't. He, he has lost the battle. If you go into a meeting with federal government and already in your own mind, you are saying, well, it's true. If you remove subsidy, it will help the fiscal. Uh, uh, you, now, you now say, uh, well, uh, if you remove subsidy, you can put CNG. CNG. You have lost the battle. And, and the government can see it. Like, like Mr. Degoro said, these guys are very, very smart. In fact, I want to use a different word. They are devious. They are devious. They can see the undercurrent. They are master strategists in Machiavellian principles. Yes. So he, 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 they can see through this community and they know that there is no opposition here. So they're just going to be toying with you. And that's what we witnessed. And that's why you can see them riding roughshod. Removal of West subsidy, no resistance. Devaluation of Naira, no resistance. Then what do you expect? So for me, this 14 day ultimatum is just another chapter in the joke that, that labor appears to have become. It, I still challenge the NLC president to prove me wrong. You know, prove that you are a man. Prove that you are labor. Prove that you are socialist in your ideology. You cannot be a capitalist and be head of labor. It's not possible. <laughs> labor unions are socialistic in, in by nature, by, by virtue of even their work. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's all about you must be welfareist. Of Nigerians, you know, they they can sense this. They've lost complete and absolute faith in the NLC. Why every time they call for a protest, or people just laugh. They're on their own. You go online and then you read the comments. People. Mama P, if you check all of the protests, Abuja, they go. Yes, the protest happened and it was nice, mm. but majority of the protesters mm. were wearing uniforms. They were members yeah, I mean, of organized labor. Yeah. They were not Nigerians. Yeah. Ordinary yeah. Nigerians yeah. did not join. Who, who, supported who are supposed to be there? They okay. did not join. Yeah. And that is something food for thought for labor. Why are Nigerians looking at them as cans? They are giving them space and just watching like this one. What are they? It's obvious that labor is not fighting for us. Then in, in addition, yes, yes. I have said it over time. Even looking at the trade union hacks and the functions of trade union, they don't fight for the whole country. They only fight for their neighbors. The only other ones are attachments. They only. But the problem that I'm just facing now is this. It's about this government. How is this government going to look itself in the mirror? And what they've done? Or what people are facing? 
I listened to injury at Glali, in Glali, Ajuri, mm. and he said it was some politicians that are making sure all those protests come on. The same Ajuri that I know on one television. Mm. Ha! Mm. Maybe that is the reason why some of us cannot be focusing. At least I have torn that road down more than three times. It was really very difficult for me. For what I stand for. Then I will not come on here and say people are suffering like this and some people have to make a protest and are saying it to politicians. At the same time, politics does not know political party, does not know politician, does not know ethnicity, does not know religion. And the same way, and don't forget, even the same way, the same hunger normally touch religious persons. It's going to, it, it's going to be very lashy seriously because they will think you are better. So, one thing here that I think Nigerian government needs to look that it is better they have to look into what they are going to be doing. Because even all the steps they are taking to do something mm. is not even something before them. Somebody said they want to be sharing grace. So, who? To How many grace? grace? So, who? 100,000 metric tons. I can't understand. <laughs> ah, it is important that you need to sit down and look at the way we are, we need to, uh, we, are, we, we need to look at this, especially the issue of the hunger. That let us let us work on that particular one. And I know that even as a person to share things to people. Because we don't have a structure. Oh, yeah. Because if you share it through politicians, all these governors, all these local government chairs, you want to share something to them. Support the law. Support the law. Because <laughs> it will never I don't know what they do is that if a governor should collect anything from federal government now, the best person is going to call is going to call his cabinet, call the party shifters in that state. And those ones they also call their sympathizer within the party. And that's how it's going to swell down. Before you know it, even only the poor that are very close to politicians can even benefit. That is why you are going to see their wife selling rice, selling gary. That that is meant for sharing. So it is important that this government needs to look into this very very well. Yeah. We know crisis in Nigeria and we want Nigeria to be united as much as irrespective of our challenges. We may have a lot of challenges but if we are united, we have a common front, at least we can be pushing hard for us to develop than a situation in which hunger will not create crisis because I must tell you, go and ask those people selling food stuff. They themselves they are tired. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They are tired. Thank you Mr. Iguero. Thank you Mr. Ashokwito. Alright, so a fresh a two-week ultimatum has been given by the Nigeria Labour Congress to the federal government. So uh, let's wait and see if in that period of time uh, the federal government will actually intervene and do something because uh, the high cost of living right now in Nigeria is killing and people are going through a whole lot. Now in the face of all of this, the 